Welcome to episode 167 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. And today we're really going to talk about how in the world do you appreciate the loss when they sting? We're making our way through the fog of life and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So life is full of winning and losing. Sometimes the losses hurt really bad. And those losses could be in a business sense. The losses could be in a romantic sense. The losses could be in the sense of uh, somebody we love passing away. It could be a house burning down. It could be um, <laughs> the loss of a year due to a pandemic. So how do we appreciate the times when things don't go the way we want? The more you look into it, the more you realize that all of the good things that are a part of your life now, really, they have something to do with things changing in one way or another. And a lot of times when things change, it's because you lost something. Something that you were planning on happening didn't happen, or something you really wanted to happen didn't happen, and now you're dealt with a loss. If you've played sports, you understand that you win and you lose. So it's just a part of life. We all have to deal with it. And some people deal with it better than other people, and I think the people that truly deal with it well are the ones that advance quicker, they're more successful, they're happier, they're more content, because they understand how to appreciate and deal with the losses. This concept of appreciating the loss came up during a conversation in a leadership class we're doing here uh, with some of my team at Congruent. And uh, the, the young man that brought it up, Dylan, shout out to Dylan. Uh, Dylan played professional basketball in Europe. And so he's been a part of very high level competitive teams. And he mentioned about what happens after you lose and you know you talk about it and you're on the bus. And he came up, he said the phrase appreciate the loss. And I wrote it down because of this fact that most of the things in our lives that we've learned that have made us better have come as a result of losing something. So I think the very first thing we can do to appreciate the loss is understand the fact that there is definitely growth to be had on the other side of the loss. And if we look closer, we're going to realize that we learn more in the losses than we learn in the wins. I can speak personally. I know that I've learned far more from the painful things that I've lost in my life than I've learned from when things went really well. I've learned that about relationships. I've learned that about business. I've learned more lessons from the money I lost than from the money I've made. And I think you understand what I'm talking about. I think you probably are going to agree that when you lose something or you get hurt, you have the opportunity to gain it. So like part of it is just a perspective shift. When you lose, you know, uh, I reference Jocko Willink a lot on the podcast. When something negative happens or something that you perceive as negative happens, he triggers the word in his mind. He says, good. Because when you say good, all of a sudden you've repositioned your thinking and to know like, okay, now there's an opportunity that is coming behind that thing that I perceived as negative in the beginning. So asking yourself, what is the lesson in the loss and just reorient, reorienting our minds to say, what can I learn here? What can I learn? I really hurt somebody. What can I learn? I lost a lot of money. What can I learn? I handled that situation poorly. What can I learn? I've done that a zillion times. In the book that we're reading with my company, Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek, he talks about the overprotective nature that many boomers uh, raised their children in and raised the millennial generation and how a lot of those things led to unhealthy expectations and behaviors, one of which, even in a very practical way, you know, if your child grows up and, you know, you sanitize their hands after every stick that they pick up and you don't let them be exposed to any evil germs and you don't let them, you know, skin their knees from playing on the playground. He gives an example in the book of someone even put knee pads on their toddler when they were learning to walk. And from a biological standpoint, if your children are not exposed to any germs or minimal germs when growing up, like sticks and eating some dirt and all that stuff, if all of a sudden they don't have that, guess what? They're going to grow up very unhealthy because their body isn't going to have the natural resistance appreciating the loss of the cleanliness, right? Now all of a sudden they're going to have allergies. 
They're going to be more susceptible to any bacteria. So it's bad. Same thing for insulating kids from loss um, of relationship or you know losing a game. And we talk about seventh, eighth, ninth place trophies where everybody gets a trophy. But when you do that, in my opinion, that's actually kind of, I won't go as far as say it's abusive, but it's incredibly devastating to the growth of a human because life is full of wins and losses. Life is full of successes and failures. And what I'm positioning for you today is like, how do you appreciate the loss when you realize that success and failure are just lessons? Two sides of the same coin of lessons that we can learn. And actually, maybe they're not equal sides because I believe, and I think you probably do too, that there's a lot more to learn when you lose. And so how do we appreciate the loss? I definitely think orienting your mind to understand that just because it's a loss doesn't mean it is not forward progress. You've maybe heard the phrase fail forward, right? If you're going to fail, make sure you understand what you learned. Well, I mean, what there was to learn in the failure. Make sure you understand, I don't want to do that again. I should do this. Or that really sucked. I don't want it to do that anymore, so I'm going to change my behavior. I'm going to change the inputs to get different outputs. Orienting your mind, understanding what is the lesson in my mind is the biggest way you can appreciate a loss. And then look at all the good things. Write them out if you have to. The things that are going to come in your life as a result of experiencing that loss. Because it's never all negative and it's never all positive. This is a principle in dealing with grief and dealing with loss. It's easy to say like, oh, that relationship that didn't work out. That person was either all bad, all the bad things, or you can really get stuck in talking about, oh, it was all good. Look at all these good characteristics that they had, and I'm so sad I lost it, right? Which is also unhealthy because it's untrue. Nothing is ever all good or all bad. Acknowledging both of those things kind of brings it to a closure, and then you can move forward. Now, in a business sense or in an organization sense or even in a family sense, the final component to really be able to appreciate a loss is cultivating the relationships around you cultivating your relationships to be with people who accept you whether you win or whether you lose, who actually let you fail because they know you're going to learn, let you fail in a way where you're protected because a good community, a good company culture, a good family, when someone has a vulnerability because they lost, well, other people around you don't exploit it. They actually try to cover it. And so that's the final thing I want to say today is who is surrounding you, who is around you that helps you appreciate the loss and who you are willing to help appreciate their loss in a way that covers their inadequacies, that covers the mistake, not in a way that like sweep it under the carpet, but covers it in a way it's like, hey, it's okay. Let's learn and grow together through this. So those are the things I wanted to talk about with you today. Those are the things that are just real time in my life. Um, and those are the things that I can count on are going to be real time in my life as long as I live because it's a part, losing is a part of life, failing is a part of life. And I want to have that perspective together. I hope we can share that perspective together because it really is just a perspective and a mindset. The only difference between really losing and growing is the mindset and the perspective. Can you appreciate it? It's the only thing that stands between truly losing and then just learning and growing. Isn't that something? It could be a loss or it could be a learning experience and you get to choose. Thanks so much for spending some time with me here on this podcast and this content on the internet. A lot of conversations going on on social media. If you're not following me or paying attention or like communicating with me, please LinkedIn, Instagram are the two places I spend the most time. I love to answer DMs and get in conversations and comments. A lot of those going on this week. It's been really great. Also, I'm on Clubhouse. I have rooms every day of the week. You can follow me at Paul J Daily. Would love to have you be a part of that. And I'm actually going to throw this in here too, because I have a few seconds. Hey, if you're in the automotive industry or you like retail, I have a group, I have an email list. Not this podcast email list, but another one, dealerspushingback.com, dealerspushingback.com. We have a lot of fun with the automotive industry, put a lot of stuff in there, company culture, what the kids are into. Sign up for the email list. It's a lot of fun. What do you have to lose? You get one email a week. Uh, aside from that, great to spend some time together. I hope you have an amazing week. I hope you fail forward. I hope you learn to appreciate the losses because guess what? They're just opportunities for you to learn and grow. Till next week, I will see you around. We came to fight.